Good morning, three million percenters. Welcome to the Transformer training call. Uh, as you can see, I, we're doing something different. Number one, I created a stand-up studio, and so I, I'm kind of working with something new here. And I think that kind of caused us to fall behind in our time. And when we launched, so I apologize. And if you see me leaning over, I'm trying to drive the show while I stand up. So thank you very much for the grace on that. You can see we've got Russell Duckworth here with us. Russell, tell us a little bit about your new your new situation. Oh, hey, so I'm coming to you live this morning from American Bank uh, down at our branch on Northwest Highway. I'm very excited to uh, join the team here as we bring accounts receivable financing to American Bank uh, beginning in January. Excellent. OK, in January. So uh, and Russell was nice enough to sponsor our last uh, three million percent or networking three million percent event this past month. So thank you very much for that as well. Absolutely. Uh, Russell has some fantastic things to show us how he's been using three million percent in growing his own business and with his personal branding. I can't wait to look forward to that. But one thing I want to do is it, we've been talking about uh, things you can do to try to set yourself up for success. So we talked about five tips to finish strong. We've been, we've started a series on that about two calls ago. And last week we discussed, remember your why. Uh, so today we want to go into that step two on those five things that you could do to finish strong. And today's topic is to refocus on productive activity and you know, I, I did mention to Russell that we'd be talking about that, but I kind of wanted to hear just off the cuff how he does things as well. Um, let's see here. <laughs> now, Russell, if you will, tell us a little bit about your history. And for some of some of our people may not know you. Some of our members may not know who you are. Uh, they might not have been in a group with you or something along those lines. So if you could just tell us how long you've been in the group and uh, been in three million percent and what your progression has been. Well, Tim, I, you know, I remember the first time you and I met was uh, it was in 2018. I want to say it was uh, spring of 2018 or summer. And yeah, you come to a, a growth group or sorry, a networking group that I was a member of and and shared three million percent. And, and I was I was blown away by the content. And more than anything else, I was blown away by the fact that a book like that is even necessary. You know, I kind of thought, wow, this is this is really some primer level stuff here. But I think the brilliance of it is that that's a great tool to help us build our networks, right? So, so when we when we kind of restructure the way that we do things around the five keys, it does help us deepen relationships. It does help us leverage networks. It, you know, it does all the things that the keys talk about. Um, so, I've I've been involved, I, I would say, for a couple of years now, um, and it's a it's a fantastic way to flush out your network. I say when I say flush, flesh out your network, <laughs> it's a great way to connect uh, more deeply with your networks and really get a handle on optimizing the way that you use your networks, uh, not only to uh, to drive business, but but just to maintain connections and communicate. Right. And something you said about the, the book being at a, at a primer level, right? Well, I went back and did the online course because I knew that, right? I knew that uh, the book was very basic. The surprising part was, is that uh, a lot of people weren't using those basic fundamentals to talk right. about the book. But then with the online course, I got to go deep and basically tell you everything I wish I would have ever known about the topic, right? Mm -hmm. And how it affected me and others that I've seen and what I've read and things like that. So I think it's really neat to actually have the, the, the peer advisory structure of this where mm -hmm. our members can share from their past experiences, victories and challenges and say, hey, this is what I'm doing that's working. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, you know, I think the, one of the foundational pieces of this, Tim, and our friend Sarah Naylor likes to talk about, you know, know, like and trust. Uh, and we've all seen those folks that will come into a networking environment and they're just looking for low hanging fruit. And, and sometimes it looks like the way my dad used to get pecans out of a country, you know, is they, they thresh that entire room trying to find somebody who will buy their app right then. Right. Um, but for most of us, that's not the way that it's done. You know, we're looking to make deep, long lasting, connected relationships. Um, so from that perspective, it seems simple, 
Um, at the heart level, I think it feels simple. From a practical day-to-day -day perspective, you, you have to build some structure around it. Right, right. And even the things you do in your daily activities, mm -hmm. you have to build structure around that. And, you know, a significant thing for me as a financial advisor when I was had my practice was before when I was under big name banks and brokerage firms, you know, they held us to certain metrics, like how many people did you call today? How many appointments did you schedule for the week and things like that? When I went independent, I knew that the pressure was too great on me to try to hold myself to those numbers. Mm -hmm. They were not going to be the same when I had uh, a database to call from. Mm -hmm. Right. So I had to create my own database as I went. And so I had to change the questions that I asked myself as in, how did you deepen relationships today? How did you mm -hmm. elevate your profile? How did you leverage networks? How did you build credibility or establish community? But I think that was the big secret. That was the big trick to changing my mindset and how I saw what I was doing. And it just built that referral generator. So it was a continual process. Would you believe I still get calls? I, I've I sold my practice in April, 2019, and I still get calls for people to transfer accounts to me. Yeah, I believe it. And it's yeah, because and they were referred. Mm -hmm. Right. They've got, uh, you've got that instant credibility with them. Right. So, mm -hmm. and it might've been people that wanted to move their accounts two years ago, mm -hmm. you know, and they just, something has, something wasn't right. You know, maybe a, a parent died. Maybe, maybe they just retired, you know, something along those lines where it gave mm -hmm. them an opportunity to move and they thought, Hey, well, Tim's still in the business. But mm -hmm. what I'm getting at with that is, here, let's say in that in, in that instance, two years ago, you know, they're still thinking about me from two years ago mm -hmm. and how to do business with me now. And that that actually came from a referral. Yeah. You know, so that was interesting. And of course, I can redirect them to our financial advisors in the program now. But I think it's great that you can build that long lasting credibility and desire to have people refer to you and do business with you the longer you're in this program. I think some of them, uh, some of our former members saw this as a class. Mm -hmm. They, they misunderstood the growth groups and just saw it as a one off or one time, maybe two times class, mm -hmm. you know, and they saw the questions as workbook material <laughs> and it really should have been, what are you doing in your business to do these things? But I've got a big announcement though, that's coming <laughs> up at the end of the call. Bring and how we're changing all of that. <laughs> so um, now let's get into our material a little bit. Yeah, you know, just to, to kind of put a bow on what you were saying, I, I I think there's, you know, there are some people that will look at anything like that. You know, there's some people that, you know, will, um, you know, they'll, they'll pick up a book, you know, in their in their teen years as a part of a required reading course, and, and they were made to read it, and they don't like it, and they're not ever going to pick it up again. Right. Or they got something out of it and that was an experience that they had and they'll never pick it up again. But I, I think that's a that's that's part of wisdom and maturity, I think, is recognizing that at different parts of your life, things speak to you differently. Um, and, and I think the, the wisdom in this, uh, the framework that you've created, Tim, is that it is it's the foundation for how we build dynamic networking groups. So it's the, it's the thing that stays consistent in terms of the way that we connect and relate to each other. The members of those groups are what's dynamic. And I haven't been in one group that even slightly resembled another, even though the material was exactly the same. These are relationship chemical reactions. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, so, that, that create transformational experiences. <laughs> yeah. And you talking about the word dynamic. I love that term for what these are. I'd say dynamic and progressive. So progressive in that each group tends to build on another, mm -hmm. even if the same people are not in it. Exactly. You know, and, I, and, <laughs> and you're going to show with that here in a little bit, I know. <laughs> but let's uh, get yeah, jump in. What'd you say? Yeah, jump in. OK, so let's talk about making a plan. If, if we're looking at refocusing on productive activities, Russell, mm -hmm. what do you think about making a plan? What do I think about making a plan? Yeah, making a plan. What what would that look like? <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, part part of my process, my normal process, is the Stephen Covey approach, which is begin with the end in mind. Um, but I also think 
um, to be intellectually honest with myself, I have to take a kind of an inventory of where I am and, and what I have at hand. So we start with the point A piece of it. You know, where am, where am I? I mean, if I'm on a trail, Haley Cotty is a way better, you know, person to talk about it from that kind of standpoint. But if, if I'm at a, a trailhead, you know, knowing where I'm at on the map, what kind of resources I have available, how much water, how much food, how, what kind of shoes I'm wearing, that all dictates how far I'm going to go. And it's not really any different if I sit down and look at it. And, and I, like, I like the short term approach. I mean, I have, I have goals for the year, uh, for 2021. Um, but uh, Alan Bean also said, uh, you can get a lot com- accomplished in a, uh, a day as long as you don't make that day tomorrow. So that's, that's the part that I like to focus on is what is mine to do right now, today, before, before, I, before I close it out for the day. Uh, and, and become a husband and a father again. <laughs> right. you know, what do I have to do to get to that point? So right. I, I think, you know, ha- having having a clear set definition of where I am at the beginning and where I want to be when I get to the end is the most important part. And I think unless you have really, really strong conceptualization skills, uh, you're going to have to fill in the blanks in between with some milestones. Right. You know, here are the here are the intermediate steps that I need to take to get from point A to point B. Right. And how my resources change or when I'm going to stop and take a break or when I need to involve somebody else for an approval process or, um, it, it, you know, it's a it, again, it sounds very simple. But depending on your skill set and your experience with doing that kind of thing, it can it can require a little bit of intellectual honesty and time. Right. And event, if nothing else, 2020 taught us that uh, five year plans <laughs> don't always work out. Right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you know, and sometimes they actually work out better than what you imagine them. And I, you know, I think that's the thing. I think 2020 is going to get a bad rap. I saw the official Christmas ornament for 2020 online, online last night. It's a dumpster with a, with a flame coming out of the side of it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. The, 20, the 20, 2020 dumpster fire Christmas ornament. Right. But, you know, I, th- I think no matter how you look at it, um, you have to, you have to put on uh, some glasses that are built for opportunity evaluation. Uh, and, that, and that may take something that looks like when I go into a movie theater, suspending disbelief. You know, <laughs> we may have to we may have to put a pause on the reality of 2020 to begin to see past it. But again, I think that's a valuable skill set, you know, uh, just like conceptualization and, and goal setting. I think imagination is a really important part of what we do every day, uh, even if even if we don't call it that, if we call it uh, daydreaming or, or mindfulness or, or however you want to refer to it. Right. Well, I think as far as how we perceive 2020, I think there's positive in everything and you have to look for it. Mm -hmm. You have to look for it, but not only how it affected you, but how to use it to your advantage. And I really think that's important, especially when you get into making a plan. So some people want to do a five year plan. Some people want to do a one year plan. Uh, I was actually reviewing planners this weekend due to the big change that I'm, I'm making here. And I ran across a planner that I've had since 2015. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know what I'd written in it? My name and the date. (laughs) 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 How's that that go? If you don't know where you're going, any path will get you there. (laughs) That's right. That's right. So this this planner was so extensive and went into your dreams and went into your values and your goals and your objectives. And yeah. it was going to be like a you needed a whole weekend retreat just to fill out the fr- fr- first three pages. Yep. And then you were supposed to establish four different objectives for each week and go through and list all your normal planner type stuff. But for each objective and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. And I was like, I don't have time for this. This is just too hard, you know? And so the most that I got out of that was writing my name and my date. And what's funnier than that is in 2015, I'd crossed out, I put a line through the 2015 date and wrote in 2016. <laughs> because I was going to do it right the next year. Yeah, right? keep, keep, keep kicking it down the road. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, it, I was actually reviewing that one to try to pull some of the stuff out of that. But uh, interesting thing was my sister-in-law this weekend was very interested in that planner. And <laughs> she said, hey, how can I go online and buy one of those? And I was like, there's no need. There is no need for you to buy that. I've got one you can have. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> and she's like, well, what all have you written in it? And I said, my name and my date and the date. <laughs> It's so, a little a little white out and you can white elephant that thing. That's right. Here at Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it was a really nice one too, all leather bound and all that kind of stuff. It was just way too expensive for me. So, you know, and seeing that though, it made me rethink how we look at things and how we plan. So when I got to doing when I got to creating the curriculum for the the growth accelerator workshops that we'll be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I came up with a 30, 60, 90 day action plan for each one of the keys, mm -hmm. you know, for each key of the three million percent process. So I think it's important for us to ask ourselves, what do you have to do now to get where you want to be in 30, 60 or 90 days? Mm -hmm. And I think it helps if you maybe look 90 days down the road and maybe reverse engineer what mm -hmm. you want your sales to be, what you want your commissions to be. How are you mm -hmm. going to get there? Back up 30 days and look at the 60 day plan. Back up another 30 days and look what you've got to do this month to make that happen. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. I'm living that right now, Tim, because, it, it, you know, as I said, we're getting ready to, to start doing business here in American Bank at the beginning of January. So we're literally on kind of a 30 day countdown right now. And that's that's probably one of the first couple of questions that I ask the vendors that I'm working with to stand the business up here is, you know, I want to, here's, here's when I need this, you know, what's the timeline for getting this element of our business online or, or stood up, if you will. So, you know, it's really important, you know, if you, so many of us, I think are, are, are spoiled by the conveniences of the time that we live in, you know, I mean, how many people go out on, on well, I don't know how many people are going to go anywhere on Christmas Eve shopping this year, but, you know, I know that, that there are many people that I run into that say, yeah, I still have a few things to get for the holidays, you know, like a day or two before they really need them. Uh, and, and, and then they're left at the mercy of the postal service or, or whoever the overnight delivery team is. And that's just, uh, you know, if I do that, that's on me. That's not on the delivery service. That's not on Amazon. I, I fail to recognize the requirements of the process that I'm involving myself in. So if I want something in my kid's hand on Christmas day this year, I should probably look at ordering that today. <laughs> right. Other, right. Other, otherwise, I have I have deferred responsibility to myself two weeks from now. <laughs> right. And and you're looking at uh, uh, maybe a quick Amazon Prime order if it'll get to them or whatever. So right. Yeah. The direct ship. That's right. That's right. right. So side side story. I don't know if I've ever shared this with anybody, but it was a valuable lesson. Always always check your target. You know, whether it's the target date on your project or the target date on your shipment from Amazon. My son's living in, in Northern California. Um, and last Christmas, I thought I'm going to I'm going to send him one of these Amazon basic kitchen packages. And it was a it was a set of cast iron cookery right, or crockery. Is it cookery or crockery? anyway, it's a cast iron skillet. It was a cast iron fajita plate. It was a cast iron pot. I mean, it was like 60 pounds worth of cast iron uh, kitchenware. And I. I shipped it to myself on accident. And so I thought, well, I'll just, that's fine. I'll just take it over to the EPS store and have them ship it to, to, to California. It was going to cost a hundred something dollars to, wow. to ship $50 worth of cast iron cookware. <laughs> and so I thought, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep this one for myself and I'm going to, I'm going to reorder that one and I'll ship it to the right place because it's still half the cost of what it would cost me to get this from, from here to there. So right. he wound up with a great set of cast iron pots and, and pans. And I, I had the same experience. So how long did it here. take? How long did it take them to get it? I was like two days. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, what a, what a great, yeah. Amazon. <laughs> I'd say check the sizes too. I saw a post on Facebook. Somebody had ordered lamps and they were 10 foot tall lamps. <laughs> You know, I think we're, we're all kind of, our expectation is the other one, right? Which right. is, you know, that thing, you know, it looks like a 42 ounce cup and then you get it and it's the size of a thimble. <laughs> and these, these look like nice living room decor lamps, right? Like a, a desk lamp. <laughs> they were two foot tall and he had them out in his yard using them for yard lighting. <laughs> that, was great. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as the 30, 60, 90 days go, I think that's really important for us to take a look at that, especially if you're in a relationship building type of a business. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you have to have those relationships because the things we do today, mm -hmm. they won't affect us until 30, 60 or 90 days later. 
Right. That, and sometimes longer, if, depending on how good you've, you've done it, Tim, if it, they're still coming a year and a half later. <laughs> the biggest, the biggest client check that I ever had written to me to invest was a million dollar check. Mm -hmm. And it took me two years of consistent relationship building with that lady to, to do that. And I had mm -hmm. no idea she was going to do that right out that big of a check. You know, mm -hmm. that wasn't even my typical client. And uh, she said, how good do you drive? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I'm pretty good. Why is that? And she's like, I'm writing you a check. <laughs> so so that goes to show persistency does pay off and you can't always count on the 90 days for, mm -hmm. for uh, your, your, that, that feeling of completion. Right. Mm -hmm. But, at least you, you have to measure progress and we'll get into that too. The progression of the 30, 60, 90 day plan and how we want to measure how you're doing on that as well. But again, we'll get into that in just a little bit, but it's important to look at that and track that track. You know, what, what I will say is I think sometimes those of us who are in sales, especially where there are incentives involved, uh, tend to focus on those items as the success items. Right. And I think what, what you, what you see, you know, continuing to receive referrals a year and a half after the business was done was that you, you sewed that field correctly. Right. You know, you did, you did what it took. You didn't walk out there and expect to pick corn, you know, you, you and, and, and I know I'm speaking to you because of the agricultural background that you have, but right. you know, I mean, again, you, you can't, ex you can't just expect to walk out in the orchard and pick the apple in this, in this kind of process, you have to be willing to plant the seed. And you right. have to be willing to nurture and guard, you know, <laughs> that, that, that area until it's ready to pick. And, and your, your process has outlived your, uh, your lease on the property. <laughs> <laughs> it's still bearing fruit and I don't even live there anymore. Right. And that, <laughs> that's, a, that's just a testament to the, to the great job that you did. But every day that we go through those processes of nurturing and feeding and watering or, or whatever that looks like, um, you know, writing a card making a call, um, you know, reaching out to somebody just because you think of them. Those are the kinds of things that we do that develop the foundations in those relationships, right? right. That, that result in that kind of fruit. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, when I came, when I came back into the Dallas area uh, and I had been in the IT business for 25 years off and on, I, uh, I, I had a consulting uh, group in Garland, uh, then went out on my own and and, and was doing kind of one-off consulting at uh, CoreLogic and Hewlett Packard and a couple other big places. Um, when I came back in, I, I sat down with my uh, with my boss. And Caps is still my boss, one of my favorite people. And you talk about a great relationship, long-term fruit kind of stuff. Um, but I told her, I said, I know um, re realistically, it's going to take me probably a year or two to develop the foundation for this business. And so if everybody is comfortable and patient, you know, with that as a, as a strategy, then we can, then we can move forward just understanding that you can't walk out and just start picking fruit. Um, and one of the first things I did was I got involved, I uh, got back involved with the Garland Chamber of Commerce and got involved as a, a class advisor for the leadership Garland program. Okay. Um, a, a program that I am passionate about. I went through Leadership Garland uh, around, <laughs> this is going to sound weird, around the turn of the century, <laughs> the turn of the millennium. Um, but I just appreciated uh, not only the, uh, again, kind of like the, the book, not only the contents or the, or the attributes of the program, but what it did to me, what, you know, the person that I became as a result of that. And so I wanted to get involved in that again. I, I wanted to, to move into a leadership uh, position in that program. Um, as a result of that, I knew that my network would deepen and I have, I have made some great friends and some great network connections uh, at the same time, uh, happy to say. But I think one of the great things about that process was one of the sponsors for one of the days uh, was a banker that I have known for uh, years. I knew her when I was involved in the chamber back in the 90s and, and 2000s. And, she, she was a sponsor at one of the events and we just chatted for a few minutes and, you know, I asked, you know, what she was up to. She asked what I was up to. She called me a couple of weeks later and she said, Hey, I've got a, I've got a client that I just can't help anymore. Um, but I, but I want you to take care of them. Can you, would, can you do that? Absolutely. Um, and, and 
I mean, for I, it's, I'm literally not more than a 10 minute conversation. Um, that, that was a $2 million deal. Wow. Not, not in my pocket, <laughs> but you still, you talk about, you know, the, the fruits of your labor. Um, they don't always come from where you expect them to, you know, you can, you know, as, as you pointed out in the book, you can cold call, you can knock on doors that are empty all day long. Um, and then be surprised when you sell something to the guy that you cross on the sidewalk on your way to the next house. And that's kind of, that's kind of what happened in that situation, but you can't minimize it, right? The reason that that happened was because of the strategy that we had involved in that process, which is I'm, I'm coming back into the community. I need to jump into the deep end uh, and reinsert myself into that group. Uh, and that's what I did. And, and I, I just can't tell you how personally rewarding it is uh, to be a member of that community, to serve that community in the ways that I'm able to do now. Uh, and to develop business at the same time. And and there's no reason to um, to try to, uh, you know, slot, slot one of them over here and one of them over there and say, OK, well, I'm putting on my nonprofit hat now. And that's I mean, all of that stuff is in this nebulous, you know, uh, uh, establishing community mm -hmm. kind of like it, right. Uh, and, and one of the keys that we talk about again. So um, that's one of the things that I've enjoyed about getting back involved uh, in, in the way that this program, I think, really works, even if it's not the core focus of what we're talking about, Tim. You right. know, I think that's the great thing is these these keys all play into every connection, every opportunity that we have without being overt, you know, without me having to say, hey, what we're doing right now is establishing community. Right. right. <laughs> well, I think that's the important, what you were just talking about, though. That's the importance of refocusing on productive activities. You what you had just said, you refocused on your productive activities. When you moved back to town, you said you jumped into the deep end, but you engaged in those conversations. Mm -hmm. Well, especially towards Thanksgiving, Christmas, things like that, you might be, um, some people might disengage. They might disengage from their market. They might disengage from their community. They might mm -hmm. just want to stay home. They may not want to be out and about, uh, you know, but I would say make your conversations count. Mm -hmm. And so just like you said, that was a 10 minute conversation that got you that $2 million deal, mm -hmm. 10 minutes. And it had you tried to call, do a, do a call and, and try to hard sell mm -hmm. that, that wouldn't have happened, mm -hmm. but it was a timely conversation over a 10 minute period that counted. And so that's what I say, make conversations count. So even if you're at Walmart standing in line, <laughs> always listen, Mm -hmm. uh, listen for those opportunities for the conversations that are existing that maybe I can actually jump into. I, I, again, I use the deep in relationships quickly aspect mm -hmm. to get into conversations that I wasn't invited to, you know? <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, it, it, all, mm -hmm. all of this has use no matter how you do it, but make those conversations count. Absolutely. You know, here's a, something else to consider is, I'm going to say reestablish or reconnect with relationships that you already have. And, and really that isn't even one of these keys that we're talking about, or one of these uh, steps that we're talking about as far as refocusing on a productive activity. Mm -hmm. But I, I, that really hit me this weekend I, or this week I was with my family. Uh, I've got three brothers and they've got kids. Each one of them has about four kids a piece. And so, I was reconnecting with my nieces and nephews and in five minute conversations, I was actually able to catch up, but reconnect with them in a way that we haven't talked before, mm -hmm. you know, because of them, several of them have graduated college. Now they're on to jobs. They've lost jobs already, or they haven't been able to find jobs due to, you know, quarantine or COVID type stuff. Um, so we're dealing with a whole new social parameter and they're new to it. Mm -hmm. And, any help I can provide, I do. But I was having, even with my own brothers, my brothers don't mess with social media. They don't really find a lot of value in it. But oddly enough, they're trying to get their, their sons and daughters to help promote their ranches and things like that. And it's like, you're missing opportunities. And so they've started this five cent brand uh, YouTube channel and they started trying to, some of you might've seen me post the picture of my brother where he did a GoPro with him roping a calf in the open mm -hmm. field. And so I was trying to encourage him. He was asking me a lot of questions about what he could do 
I was actually trying to encourage him and what he could do to make his YouTube channel better. Uh, you know, just giving him some guidance and direction. Those are conversations that I've never even had with my brothers, you know, mm -hmm. so redirecting or reestablishing older connections in different conversational formats, I would say, make your conversations count. Absolutely. So now well, Tim, you're, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'll credit to you. You're, you are really good at it. Um, oh, at the listening, you. at the, at the listening part of it, especially, um, I've seen you engage people in multiple environments, you know, where the opportunity was there for you to try to sell or, or, or try to share. Uh, but, you know, I think the first the seek first to understand part right. is so important. Uh, you know, just take a minute, take a breath and, you know, see, see what the other person has to say. And, and I, you know, I think this time of year, especially around Thanksgiving and the holidays, there's such an opportunity for that. You know, it, it, things do tend to, especially on the in the sales side of it, you know, the, the energy tends to die down just because the, the, the season, uh, at least in the Northern hemisphere, I guess. Um, but, you know, take, take time to, to deepen those, those relationships. Uh, you know, people are much more willing to sit down over a cup of coffee when it's cold. <laughs> right. Right. Well, they're actually when they're comfortable too. So if you were to imagine, a uh, cup of coffee and fireplace that opens them up to share deeper than if you were standing outside in a line to do COVID testing. <laughs> yeah. But I know that you would, you would find a way to make that work for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> I appreciate you seeing that. <laughs> so speaking of that, surround yourself with people you trust that will help you get there. So I want to go into what you've done. You've actually tracked how you've surrounded people with that you trust through the three million percent growth group program. Would you show us what you're doing there? Absolutely. And 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 in full disclosure, some somewhere in my transition from my previous work PC to to today, I I don't know where I, what I've done with it. I know it exists somewhere, probably on my home computer. Uh, but but this is one that I put together this morning. And so in, in, in haste, I just tried to to simplify it a little bit here. But I just I wanted to share something real quick about the reason that I use this um, uh, geometry when I'm doing my network structure. Um, and, and many of you know that I'm a beekeeper uh, at home. Uh, and I just I found a lot of wisdom in the way that those uh, little girls work. Um, and just love observing them. Uh, and, and I get way more in terms of, I think, understanding of the natural world and just insight than I, than I could probably ever take in honey from them. But I think one of the things that, that you'll see here as we start to flesh this, uh, this out is, you know, we start with this, maybe this single group and, and, and this core group for me in terms of our conversation, Tim represents that first growth group that, that I was involved in that included uh, Guy and Shelby and, and Perry. Um, and, and that was a great experience, you know. But I think we lost you. I'm, I'm hopeful that Russell will come back. <laughs> we, uh, we lost his stream. So I apologize for that. Um, but Russell has a, a layout of every person that he has made contact and connection with actually built community with through the growth group program. And it's quite extensive to see. And this is one of the highlights of what I wanted to show today. So I do apologize that he's not on with us. I bet he'll tag back in here in a second. So I uh, could have been pressing a wrong button on the screen, but I, I'll wait on him to get back to make my big announcement as well. But I hope that you're able to gain from this. And I want you to comment if you have any thoughts or ideas or, or even questions on what we're talking about. Uh, we'll open that up as well. But, I'll go into detail on surrounding yourself with people you trust to help you get there. So as you go through these next, you know, 30 days, let's say, and you've got growth groups still happening, but they're kind of coming to an end. We want to really take advantage of these workshops that we're having to continue to build that, that momentum that you're going to need for January and February. But that's another way that you can surround yourself with those people to help you get there. 
And we're back. I'll tell you what, uh, if it weren't for the dark angel of product demos, uh, I would make this a career. <laughs> now, so, I'm not, there I'm you not, go. I'm not really sure. Um, are you still there? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. I don't have to, I don't have to see you. I just, I just need to be able to see what I'm doing here, I guess. Okay. Right. So, so we started out, this is, this is kind of that core group and, and I use it for illustrative purposes. So if you were in any of these groups, uh, I didn't leave you out on purpose. I just have limited space and time this morning. So I think again, part of the wisdom here uh, about the structure of, of the honeycomb, uh, the hexagon is that uh, it, it is way more efficient than any other shape at interlocking with other shapes. So when you, when you stack another hexagon next to a hexagon, you effectively build without having to build another wall. So you build using the first wall from the first cell uh, and then build out the next five cells. Does that make sense? So you're, you talk about uh, efficiency and resources and time management. It's way easier for me to build uh, these groups with these common uh, common resources. I hear structure and support in that as well. Absolutely. Um, so as, as we continue to build these growth groups out, uh, you know, again, every one of these represents a group that I've been a part of. Um, but, I, but I think part of the brilliance of what we do here is that, you know, you see this last one that I put in the guy, Sean, Paul and Erica group. I'm not a part of that group. Um, but based on the work that I have done with Guy Lawson, um, and the relationships that I have through other networking, I actually, I know everybody in that group um, and have great relationships with uh, everybody in that mastermind group. And so when I, when I need to make a connection outside of my direct network, I've got great ability to do that in this case through Sean, right? Um, so uh, this, this is just a, a framework and a, and, a, and a visual that I enjoy. Um, Manage, you know, kind of, kind of let me get some insight into my network. I, I wish some of the online networking tools would give us the ability to uh, to see our networks like this. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm, I'm I'm building it from scratch right now. So if anybody's aware of a way to make LinkedIn uh, generate <laughs> uh, generate a honeycomb pattern like this, I'd, I'd be interested. <laughs> That's cool. I really think it'd be good to do a. Um just a little educational video to show how our, our growth group program works in building through structure and, and support and how we deepen these relationships and build a community through that. Absolutely. So, so what have those relationships meant to you, Russell? Oh my gosh. Um, opportunities. I, I, I'm amazing opportunities and not just from a, not just from a, my perspective uh, or, you know, what I need in terms of uh, business connectivity, uh, but relationship connections, uh, the, the ability to serve my community in, in ways that I would not have had an opportunity to do um, if it hadn't been for the relationships that I built out through, especially through that core group. Um, and you, you, you talk about, uh, no, we, we, we haven't really talked about this, but, you know, we, part of what we talked about was the, uh, um, that planning, the planning piece of it and the measuring piece of it, you know, sometimes, sometimes you look objectively at, at information about some of these groups and they just, maybe they just don't work for whatever reason. A uh, guy and guy and Perry and I sat down and, and, and filled out a little report card that that guy had presented about a networking group that we were all members of. And it, it required a lot of intellectual honesty. I, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that group. I enjoyed being a part of that group and going to those, we were meeting every week. And doing that for over two years, they, they, some of them have been part of it for longer than that, but um, it was a part of my routine. Um, but when I sat down and looked at that report card, I just couldn't intellectually justify it anymore. You know, I, I, I said to myself, if I took this to my boss and sat down and said, this group cost me X dollars a year. Uh, it cost me this much in terms of time, you know, to whatever hour and a half or two hours a week there and back in the meeting. And, and here's how I justify this. You know, it's, it's it's personally rewarding. Uh, it makes me feel good. <laughs> right. You know, but in, but in terms of uh, in terms of business opportunity, there just wasn't any in that group for for a B two B business like me. Uh, right. and, and so I made the the hard decision that I was going to uh, create my own B two B group uh, with a few members of that group, and and we're standing that up right now. Okay. Well, yeah. good. Well, and I mentioned when you. 
uh, went dark on us for a little bit about <laughs> the idea of, of how to continue surrounding yourself with people you trust that will help you get there. So mm -hmm. we've got a lot of growth groups that are that are almost through. Right. Mm -hmm. They will be ending in December. Some of them started just recently, but still, <laughs> that, the rest of us don't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But one thing I hope to do, I was trying to do with the um, with the growth accelerator workshops mm -hmm. and why I wanted our members to be able to come to that for free would be that you could actually get in one more growth group cycle to continue your momentum into January and February. Mm -hmm. Right. And in doing that, we're actually, we'll have small group breakouts too, but the idea would be for you to bring people to that, but also be able to plug them in. I mean, it, it ba basically would be a full day of you implementing the 3 million percent process mm -hmm. with people that you know, and you don't know. Right. And so the idea would, would be that we were, we would get in guests from all over the place that would, that would feel that sense of community and understand like what you're talking about with the honeycomb, we could build out a whole honeycomb in a single day in a single room. Absolutely. Right. But, and it would maintain momentum because right now for those that check out during December mm -hmm. or that have checked out November, or December, mm -hmm. it's going to be very hard for them to go back and reestablish these relationships and refocus on these product, productive activities. Uh, they might be able to make plans, but making their conversations count. If they're un, if they're disengaged, they're not thinking about the right conversations they need to create business. Right. You know, and so that was the the whole idea behind that. Now, in those growth accelerator workshops, everyone that attends will be walking away with a 90 day action plan. That's fantastic. OK, so that there instead of the whole workbook, um, looking to see if I had it available on my desk, but I, I shortened each key to about two questions because each small group breakout in the in the day in the workshop is going to have to answer those two questions and develop a 30 day plan, a 60 day plan and a 90 day plan as to how they'll implement that question. I love it. Right. You know, I think there's, a, there's plenty of opportunity, you know, given, given a day to accomplish something, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm able to look at things a lot differently than if I only had an hour to do it. And, and I think, you know, when, when we're talking about doing this whole process in a day, that's, I mean, approximately how long each key would be, you know, so if we distill it to the most in, intense or, or flavorful part of each of those keys, right. um, you know, what, you know, what do we, what do we really focus on? Um, you know, how do we experience those, you know, in that uh, compacted kind of time frame? You know, it's, it's like those little things we see on our Facebook feed, you know, how fast can you find the M in the C of W's or whatever. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, this is where it gets really exciting, Russell. And I know I've mentioned it to you before, but in preparing the material for this, this uh, growth accelerator workshop, actually, I had just done that so that we didn't have to use the workbooks in the workshop, right? Mm -hmm. Because it would be too extensive for, especially for people that have never been through it before. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't understand the whole 30, 60, 90 day deal and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I woke up, woke up at 3.30 a.m. on Wednesday before Thanksgiving with a whole new concept to the growth group program. Mm -hmm. I think I have a text from you saying something to that effect. <laughs> and, and I have reworked it since. And so what you're going to experience, we're going to do away with the growth group workbook. OK, so you still will have the growth groups and it's still curriculum. We're replacing the workbook with a 90 day action planner. Love it. Right. And so in that, in that planner, you're actually going to write down who's in your growth group with you because we want you to keep that planner to go back and look and see who was with you, who you had surrounded yourself with, mm -hmm. who those connections were, what you talked about. And then you're going to be able to self evaluate your on a monthly weekly and daily basis. So it'll be a daily planner. It'll be a weekly planner and a monthly planner That's of fantastic. how you implement each of these keys. Yeah. So important to have that daily uh, checklist 
available so that you know you're on target for your weekly and monthly. Absolutely. Can't and look at it too on high. Each page, on each daily page, you'll have your typical time block scheduling you want to do, but also instead of to do's or things like that, actions to take and connections to make. Mm -hmm. And you'll get to make notes on that. But at the end of each day, there will be a daily review page that goes back to at the first of this conversation. When I said I track myself differently, mm -hmm. you'll be able to write down what you did to deepen relationships quickly. What do you did to elevate your profile, leverage networks, build credibility or establish community. And you'll be able to give yourself a rating on how you did. Yeah, right. And that, mm -hmm. and that rating is going to cross over to a weekly plan and you get to see how you did on the week. Mm -hmm. And then there'll even be a monthly version of that of how you did this month. Uh, and so in the monthly parts, you'll get to write out all of the events that you plan on attending, all the committees you're on, all the meetings you're going to attend, all the, all your leadership opportunities. So it will be a quite an extensive type of a deal in each, uh, each of the keys, they're going to be at the very first. So those would be what you would cover in your growth groups, but what they're going to look different. They're going to have different questions that are harder for you to answer, right? <laughs> that are more thoughtful. Oh boy. <laughs> and then on top of that, you will have the 30, 60, 90 day outlook for each, how you would answer each question. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're going to be planning as you go through each growth group. So that's how this is going to work. It's going to look a lot different. It's going to have a different feel to it. And you will actually, we'll still have the, um, the ability for you to download it, uh, download it for free from the Podia dashboard. Mm -hmm. So for those that don't want to buy the physical planner, they can just print theirs off. Oh, nice. But, you would actually be buying it through Amazon if you wanted a paper version. Okay. So yeah, uh, there's something uh, and, and it, it's odd how many, I, and I'm going to use this term. I don't even know if it's okay, but how many young people <laughs> I meet that actually like having a physical book in their hand. I think it's uh, maybe novel for them, so to speak. Right. I want it where you have a reason to carry it around with you all the time, mm -hmm. but you're going to be making notes on yourself as you go. Right. Yeah. And you can even do takeaways from a single day, but it's a way to keep track of your progress and take a look back at your 30, 60 and 90 day plans and see if you're on track. Mm -hmm. uh, see if those, those need to be navigated. But yeah. in that, in that whole process, you're going to write down your victories, your challenges and your experiences that you want to share with your growth group. Mm -hmm. So you would have remembered those and you go back over your notes and say, oh, hey, this hit me this week. You know, what if we did this mm -hmm. or this is something I did this week that might work for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe there's just something about the way that your natural rhythm works, you know, in your business that if, if you do, if you do things consistently, it always pays off in a certain way. And you just don't have that realization until you sit down and evaluate how you're doing it and where those successes happen. Um, I, I actually make a request and that is I, I need a little, I, you talk about your brothers and social media. I think I still need a little, um, daily reminder and, and some of this and it may, you know, I don't know if you know anybody who's good at the social media thing, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I just need those reminders. It feels a little, um, feels a little ego driven sometimes for me to sit down and say, okay, what do I need to post now? You know, what do people need to know about what I'm having for lunch or, but you know, I'm, I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of being sarcastic about that a little bit, but I understand that there's something about the presence piece of it. That's very important. Uh, and then I need to stay connected with and about all I've been able to do right now for the, and for the past 24 weeks, I've put together on, on my LinkedIn profile, a little, uh, what I call inspire buzz post. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, pictures that I take of my bees and just insights that I get, you know, from working with them. Um, right. And I understand the importance of that kind of level of connectivity. And I understand that I don't do it enough either. So that's, that's part of, I, I think what I would need in, in my planner is, you know, how are you, how are you leveraging social media, you know, in terms of what your goals are? That's a great, that's a great, uh, I, I thought about that. I thought about that. And um, I, I appreciate that feedback because it was something that, 
I had really kind of already dismissed due to the, <laughs> uh, the uh, I guess all the planning that I went and mm. saw, but I, I do think it would be good to kind of develop a rhythm also. Like if you're producing videos, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for the YouTube training I've been in says you need to be doing one a week at the same time. So just like we have the, I must ask you a question show at two o'clock every Monday, you know, that is a rhythm that I don't want to fall out of because mm -hmm. I would rather do a live stream show than a, an edited version where mm -hmm. it's going to take up the rest of my day yep. to try to go back and edit and put in subtitles and things like that. Right. So that's why mm -hmm. I went with the live stream show, but it's one of those things that I don't dare miss that. And I have a co-host there to keep me accountable to make, make sure that we're doing what we need to be doing too, because our profile stays elevated. Right. That's the idea behind it. it we're doing 3 million percent stuff with that show. And mm -hmm. we're just talking about relationship marketing. Well, you're doing life, you know, and I think that's the great thing about, you know, what you do here, uh, what you do in the, I must ask you a question show, you know, there are a handful of other folks that I think, um, you know, were involved kind of in the, in the foundational, levels of the program that are, you know, do the same thing. Hey, they, they see the value in it. Uh, they see the economy in doing it like this. Uh, and I just, I just think it feels better, you know, just to, to sit and have a great conversation with you and, and, and talk about what we, you know, what we share and uh, right. not just in terms of the program, but doing life together. That's right. That's right. Well, on that note, I do appreciate you taking time to spend the time to talk to us about what you're doing and, and especially sharing that chart. Uh, I think that's important that they get something out of that. So again, appreciate you being here and uh, we're so glad to have you in your new role. Yeah. And you to introduce that on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Well, and I appreciate it. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I'll plug it just a little bit, you know, Go because ahead. I think one of the important things right now with what's going on in, in the business world is uh, just the reality of how business has changed. And, and for small businesses, uh, especially small and medium sized businesses, they don't they don't have deep pockets to fall back on. So anybody out there that knows somebody who's in a B2B business relationship. So if they're if they're making widgets or they're performing a professional service and sending an invoice to their clients uh, and cash flow is a problem, we can help. Uh, nobody likes to hear checks in the mail. Um, and we actually can remove that from the conversation as a part of our program. So. When we get a copy of that invoice, uh, we put money in our client's account the next day. And that's the power of cash flow acceleration uh, with factoring or with accounts receivable financing. So I appreciate the opportunity, Tim. Love the program. Love every opportunity I have to visit with you or, or sponsor an event. So thanks again. Hey, thank you, Russell. And listeners, please join us again next Monday at 9 a.m. And we'll talk about how to become more of a transformer and We'll get into the third aspect of the five, five ways to finish strong. And we'll be talking about redirecting negativity and distraction. <laughs> so uh, we've got plenty of that to redirect from right now, but we look forward to seeing you next Monday at nine o'clock. Have a good day. Bye everybody.